you've all learned about spraying before uh, listening to me, so we're going to reverse it now. We're going to talk about applying paint with, with your traditional brushing and rolling tools. So we worked with Harris about three years, well, it's actually about four years ago, to design new applicators to apply their new Ultima Plus paint. So our challenge was to, to make applicators that would apply their paint the best. So when you look at our product range that we're, we're making for, for Harris, each brush and rollers represents the best applicator for that particular paint. So I know that a lot of you are used to using bristle brushes for every application that there is out there, but we had to design latex brushes that we've been using in North America for years. So we're going to go through brushes, rollers. We have some unique items that Harris also is bringing to the marketplace. Go through those. And uh, we do have some samples for everybody at the end of it as well. So if you can come by the booth, if you haven't already, we've got uh, roller samples and brush samples to hand out. So I'm going to start with, with paint brushes. So as I mentioned, everything that we do is designed to match the paint. So, you know, the Ulta... Ultima Plus paint, which has five key things and is a great quality paint. I've talked to a lot of you today that are using the paint, very happy with the paint. The one thing is if you're using a great quality paint, if you're using the wrong applicator to put it on with, you're wasting your money because it's only as good as what's actually putting it on that substrate. So it's really important to use the right tools on the job site to apply the coating. So in the case of the oil-based paint, the Ultima Red Label, we've designed a brush that's a bristle blend. So it's mainly bristle mixed with a little bit of polyester. And it's going to give you a very, very fine finish. No brush marks, no brush lines. We've designed the Keeper to be a melt carton type quality. So once you're finished that job at the end of the day, you spin the brush, and I'll show you the spinner later, and you put that brush back in the keeper. And it's good for a long time. You can open it up the next day, the next week, but that keeper is actually designed to put that brush away still moist. Where we, um, where we get into your latexes, which are obviously the whole market is moving towards latex, and a lot of you out there still want to use a bristle brush, you need to change your mindset. Using a bristle brush and latex paint, you're not doing the, the paint any favor whatsoever. You need to go to a synthetic brush. So synthetic brushes means that it's made from man-made materials. So this is made from nylon and polyester. A bristle brush is made from hog hair. Okay, so before a hog is slaughtered, they shave it. All the hair is swept up. It's then boiled, treated, and sent to the brush manufacturers to put in paint brushes. So what happens if you use a, a bristle brush in latex paint, it's the same as using your own hair at the end of a brush. So I don't have much left, but what I do have left, if I get it wet, it goes a little frizzy. So if you ever notice when you're using a bristle brush in latex paint, your brush is flaring on you, right? It's not keeping its shape, okay? So that's why we're cheating on the bristle blend, we're actually putting some polyester in there because we know that we're not going to convert you guys overnight. But you'll probably notice that the Ultima Plus, if you are continuing to use it in latex, it's actually keeping its shape a little better because we're putting a little bit of polyester in that brush to actually keep it from having a bad hair day, okay? Because that's what happens with 100% bristle if you use it in latex. So please, if you're using latex, using that blue label product, use the Ultima Blue Brush, okay? Designed for that paint specifically. It's gonna give you great results every time. It's not gonna flare out, okay? It's gonna keep its shape. One of the unique things we do to all of our synthetic brushes is we actually bake the brush. After we assemble the brush head, we put it in an oven, bake it for about 24 hours. And what that does is gives our, our bristles or our polyester nylon fantastic memory. So it bounces back every time, okay? Most of our competitors use hollow filaments. These are solid, round, tapered filaments, okay? Hollow filaments are like a straw. So you can imagine a brush with straws in it. You bend a straw, it stays bent. None of our brushes have hollow filaments, okay? So that's going to keep its shape. 
Time after job after job after job. Again, clean it with water, spin it dry, put it back in its keeper. So again, if you're buying the top end paint, don't fool yourself by buying anything down here. Because to you, you know, what's, what's important to a painter? Time, money, and energy, right? You want to get into a job, you want to get out of that job, you want to do a great job, but if you can save time doing that job, guess what? You're going to outquote all your competitors. So buy the right tool that's going to save you the time. Believe me, buying this brush, it's going to pay for itself day one. Because that's much more time you're going to save. You're not going to go back to that bucket or tray to reload it. It's going to hold paint, it's going to release it. We third party test all of our applicator tools. So every tool that Harris has in their line has all been third party tested against all your other name brands, your Purdy's, your Corona's, et cetera, et cetera. So we, we know when we bring out a product, it's the right product and it's gonna perform against all our competitors. So again, as you move down, you're gonna go down to the XL, the Perma, which is a, uh, a bristle blend again. But again, not nearly the quality has your, your red top end Ultima. You're buying a less expensive paint, this will do the job. But you're still better off buying a high-end tool. The high-end tool is going to last longer, it's going to perform better, and it's going to save you time. Okay? So view these as your price point brushes, anything in this line. But again, I can't stress enough, buy the better stuff, it's going to pay for itself in space, regardless of the coating that you're using. Any, any questions on on the brushes from anyone? Pretty straightforward. We'll move into the rollers. And we're gonna start off with the, with the top end, which is the Ultima. This is our microfiber fabric. I'm sure you've heard a lot about microfibers. Everyone's launching microfibers. And in North America, we were the last company to actually launch one because we had a third party test. It took us about a year to make sure we had the right fabric and we're finishing it the right way. So we all buy fabric from the same places, but it's how you actually finish a roller in your equipment that matters the most. There's a video running here that shows our equipment, how we do things, but it depends how fast you spin the roller, how deep you comb the roller, how much you shear off the roller. That all equates to paint pickup and release. So again, in a, in a, in a, in a roller just like a brush, you wanna go into that can or that bucket or the tray, and you want to pick up the max amount of paint, and you want that paint delivered to the substrate, right? You don't want to be going back and forth. This roller is designed to do that. A lot of microfibers hold a lot of paint, just like ours do, but basically they dump their paint as soon as you touch the substrate. So what's that mean? That means you're going back to that same spot on your wall to pick up the paint to move it farther down the wall. Whereas this is designed to pick up paint, and release it over time. Third party testing, a 3 8 roller goes 19 meters. That's here to the door, guys, before it dry rolls. Think about that. Think about that, what that means to you working every day as a pro professional painter. That's gonna cut your time, going back to that tray, immensely, okay? You've just saved two hours in your day. If you're rolling, Eight hours a day, I guarantee you, this roller will save you a couple hours. That's huge, okay? Gives you a competitive advantage against your competitors, gets you out of that job quicker than anybody else, and the finish you get is fantastic. We've had a lot of people come in here that have used it and are raving about the roller. Priced, it's priced up here, but again, you only get what you pay for. And this roller will, will pay for itself anyways, just from the time savings you're gonna get. We have them in different pile heights, medium, a low pile, medium pile, and a high pile, okay? You can use the low pile in your oils. It's gonna give you a pretty heavy orange peel effect, but it certainly will perform in oils. Ideally though, it's for your, late, for your latex finishes. It comes, it goes up to about a three quarter inch nap, so you can hit your rougher substrates. You get very little splatter. This gentleman will tell you, he paints with those clothes on, never gets any splatter. Um, so 
when it holds the paint, it hangs onto it. And it's not going to splatter all over, all over the substrate. This is a woven fabric. Okay, so when you manufacture paint rollers, they're either woven or they're knitted. Okay? So you buy fabrics in two different formats. That's it. You can't buy anything different. So a woven fabric means that the fabric is actually woven around the backing, holding the fabric. So it goes into the backing, loops around, and then loops through. So it's actually tied to the backing of the fabric. So it won't shed. You're not going to get a, sh a single hair coming off this. Okay? It will not shed onto, onto your substrate. Woven rollers, on the other hand, I mean knitted rollers, on the other hand, all that happens is the fabric goes through the backing and goes back up. So it's just like this. So they will shed. Okay? So the PERMA and the XL, this is an acrylic roller, this is a polyester roller. They shed like crazy. Okay? Not gonna, not gonna tell you any tales out of school. One thing you need to do if you're gonna use these, wash them first. Okay? Run them under, underwater. Rub your hand through them, get rid of any loose, loose hair. Once it sheds, that initial shedding will get rid of 90% of what's gonna come out of the roller going forward, okay? So they're a good roller, but don't start by just sticking this in your paint and going at it. You gotta clean them first. The acrylic roller is gonna hold a lot more paint than the polyester. Again, price point will, will tell you that. We've put stripes on this one. People go, what's with the stripes? The stripes tells you when it's time to reload, okay? So if you see that stripe showing through your paint, you know, you're, you're rolling up and down the wall and you're actually seeing the stripe on that roller, you need to go back to the tray and get more paint. You don't have enough paint on that roller. Okay, so a little trick to, to that roller, why we put stripes on it, so you actually know when to go reload. Your Excel, cheap and cheerful. You're doing something outside, exterior, you're not really, you know, you've got a quick job. This is, this is the one you're gonna use for maybe an hour, two hours, and toss. Okay, someone might, you might be using this for eight hours right now. You're wasting your time, guys. Move up. Move up the ladder to a higher quality product, and you're going to reap major, major benefits. So again, great for latexes. Wouldn't recommend these in oils. They're knitted. Oils pull paint. You guys all know that, right? It pulls paint. No matter how much thinners you put in it, you put additives, et cetera, et cetera. So don't use a knitted roller and oils. You're just going to make a mess of the substrate. So for oils, I already mentioned you can use the lower pile microfiber. But the best one to use is the, the simulated mohair. Okay? Not designed to hold a lot of paint, but designed to give you a super, super fine finish. It's going to give you a sprayed on finish. Okay? Great roller, but don't expect to be, you know, going miles with, with the coating. It's designed to actually give you a super smooth finish. Again, a woven material, won't shed. So for your fine quality, you know, doing oil doors, fine finish, high gloss, this is, this is the one, okay? Any questions on the rollers before I move on? Yes, sir. Not your rollers, but your brushes. Yes. What is it that sometimes brush may start good pulling the edge. Then after a little while, the, the end gets fat, gets fat and it can't cut. Um, the question was, why does a, a brush, at the beginning when you're breaking in the brush and using the brush, keep its shape and then thereafter it's actually bulging up and not holding paint? That's typically, again, can't speak for the brush that you're using, but typically it's probably not manufactured in a proper way because it shouldn't bung up. That, that brush should hold as much paint, if not more, after about three break-in periods and should not be bulging up on you. Unless it's an, uh, you know, your oil paint is bulging up the brush and it's drying as you're using it. The Marshawn brushes, the six inch brushes, sometimes they start bad, but then after a while, the, the, the end of the brush here gets fat and it doesn't hold it as you cut. Okay, are you using, again, I hate to ask this question, but are you using a bristle brush and latex when this is happening? In, in oil or latex? And okay. Yes. Okay, so wrong brush, wrong application. This is bristle. Okay? So move up to that. 
and you're not going to have a problem. We'll go to a synthetic brush. Bristle, you're going to have that problem. So you need to, you need to move to a 100% synthetic brush, and that problem should disappear for you. That's, again, a great oil brush. Good for your oils. Okay. Oils, oil base. Yeah. So mini rollers, we basically mirror the same thing. So for your oils, we have a mohair, same fabric that we're putting on the large roller on the mini roller. Okay, and that's important to use the matching fabric because it gives you exact same, same look on the wall, right? It's gonna match your large surface roller if you're trimming around windows, doors. You don't wanna use a roller that's got a higher pile because you're gonna see that effect on the wall, right? So this is gonna match your, your perma roller. It's gonna give you the same, same effect, okay? For your, for your latexes, Another one you can use for oils before I move on, sorry, is the foam. Foam is great for oils. Gives you, a, again, a high gloss finish if you're using a high gloss enamel. Gives you a sprayed on effect. We round it on both ends because then you don't have to roll left to right or right to left. You don't get any roller tracks, okay? If this was cut straight, you're gonna get a roller track that you gotta move left to right. So we round it on both ends so you get no roller tracking. High density foam, there's a lot of foam rollers out there. This is a 50 kg foam. Why is that important? That means it's got less air. Most of our competitors are 30, 30, 30 uh, uh, use a 30 pound foam. You get more air in it, more air, more bubbles. Okay, so the higher the density, the less bubbling you get as you're rolling this through an oil-based paint. So the mohair and the foam come in 10 packs, and so does the trim roller. So the trim roller, our gold stripe roller, a little different than all the, other, all the other mini rollers, it has fabric that goes right around the end of the roller. So why is that a, a benefit to a painter? You can cut into a corner without a brush. So no longer do you have to brush into a corner. You, you can actually use the mini roller for that application. So again, time saver. You guys ever heard of picture framing effect when you brush around your doors and windows? So you have brush marks now around your doors and windows and you're rolling up to that. Well, you see those brush marks. So instead of using a brush or a roller to go around those door frames and window frames, use that mini roller. Cut in around all those door frames and windows. It saves you a tremendous amount of time. A ton of time. And now you've got the same effects around that door and window as you do on the, on the large surface wall. You're not getting any picture framing effect. So great little, great little tool. I can't, you know, you can't paint, once you get started with them, you can't paint without them. At the end of the day, just take it, throw it in the bucket, and fish it out the next morning. You don't have to worry about cleaning it, it's ready to go the next morning. I just recommend you leave them right in the can, okay? So you don't have to worry about cleaning them out, just throw them in the can and away you go. Okay, let's talk about what you put the rollers on, your cage frames. So you might wonder why this has got a double bow in it. So we came up with this idea well over 20 years ago, and what this does is it grips your roller. So how many of you put a roller on a cage frame, and as you're rolling up and down the wall, your roller starts to skid off the frame, okay? So this is designed to grab the roller very snugly, So that avoids that whole issue of that roller frame now sliding off the cage. Big frame? Any rollers that can be used on epoxy things. Epoxy? You can use certainly use the simulated mohair and epoxies. The four inch one, the same thing. Use the, the mohair. Or the yeah, the foam was not recommended. So use the uh, the mohair. The other frame we have, which has got the extended reach, this is great if you're in a closet, 
you know, you need that extra little room to, to, to work and you don't have, you don't have the ability, ability to put an extension pole in this frame, you're in those kind of sub, you know, uh, situations, great for those types of occupations. It's got a double bearing in it, rolls really well. Extra heavy duty wire, which grips that roller without the need for a double, double bow. This is much thinner wire, which makes it a, a more of a price point product, but you're gonna get rid of that walk off, whereas this is designed not to get the walk off, okay? Just that heavy, heavy, heavy duty wire. We put metal ends on all our frames. Why is that important? Because if you put an extension pole on this on and off, on and off, you'll actually crack the plastic eventually, okay? So we put metal ends, not only on our cage frames, but also in our mini roller handles. Everything we do has a metal end on it. Again, just a little thing, little extra thing that we do. So, talked about the Harris lineup. I just want to briefly mention some new products that we've just brought into the marketplace. And that's our Eminence and Solomon and Aristocrat. So most of the painters here are used to using flat brushes. Okay? North America, with the exception of you know, mainly Texas, everyone else uses an angle sash. So if you haven't tried an angle sash, I'd highly recommend that you do so. Okay? They're a different construction than the brushes that you're typically used to using here. You're used to using a brush that's basically finished and then chopped, right? It's very square, okay? These are all chiseled to a, basically a point. Angle sash, why? Because when you're cutting in, if you're cutting in a ceiling, you're holding this brush in this manner, the entire flat surface of the brush is touching the substrate, okay? So you're gonna go so much further on that wall cutting in than you are with a flat brush. You're using a flat brush to cut in, there's only so much bristle that's actually touching the substrate. It also gives you a great line of sight because now you're, you're actually able to see the end of the brush. Okay, same nylon polyester that we're using in the Ultima brush. We, we color all our filaments prior to extruding them. We actually manufacture all of our nylon and polyester through extrusion machines, again, very unique to us. So these are not dyed. The filament color is actually in the nylon and polyester when we start off with it in its raw form. So you can use this in a hot solvent, and some of you probably have witnessed maybe using a brush in a hot solvent, and the color of the brush is now running into your paint. That's not gonna happen with any of these brushes. Again, baked, giving you great memory. Hardwood handles, these are all beechwood handles, okay? So that's, why is that important? Because that gives the brush balance, okay? A lot, of our, a lot of our competitors use Chinese hardwood, which is basically a softwood, right? They feel totally different. If you feel this brush, it's weighted well. So again, if you haven't tried an angle sash, recommend you do. Um, the two series, the Eminence and the Solomon, gonna give you basically equal performance. The Eminence is our number one selling contractor brush, priced that it's a few bucks more than the Solomon, but uh, in terms of overall performance, you might get a little added benefit by using the Eminence. It's gonna pick up a little more paint, release a little more paint to the Solomon, but not noticeable. And then we brought in a 100% bristle brush as well, which is our Aristocrat series. I'm sure you guys have noticed now the black bristle out there is, is shiny. Why is it shiny? Because it's white bristle dyed black, okay? It's getting very hard to get black bristle now. So the hogs are blonde and then they dye the bristle, okay? So this is just off a of blonde hog. So instead of us dyeing it and going through that process, which I think changes the attributes of bristle anyways, we're just going ahead and using the, the raw white bristle has is. Okay, so they're in the stores. Um, one of the other new items, again, very popular in the West Indies is the sheepskin roller. Use a seven ply core, high quality sheepskin roller, okay? You're not gonna find a better sheepskin roller than this in the marketplace. And now available through Harris in four different naps. I had a question earlier today saying, <clears throat> I love your microfiber, but I got stucco I gotta paint. And the highest pile you got is a three quarter inch. And the reason we can only have a three quarter inch is we can't make the fabric any higher than that. It loses all of its qualities. 
So that's as high as we can go. So you're in that situation where you've got a rough surface. The, the sheepskin comes in an inch and a quarter. Okay, so that's gonna get into all your nooks and crannies. And sheepskin, there isn't a better paint pickup, paint release roller than natural sheepskin. When we made, when, when microfiber hit the market, that's what you're trying to duplicate. You're trying to duplicate sheepskin, okay? So this is the cat's meow for paint rollers, right? You can't get better than a natural sheepskin roller. Again, the keepers, one of the things we do as well, we actually tell you how to take care of your product. Each keeper is specific to the brush. So it gives you instructions on how to care for it. I'll coat it like a milk carton. So put that brush away damp and hang it in your truck or hang it on the wall and it's gonna last a long time. I've had more questions about these spinners. This is actually a, a product my dad uh, um, was very instrumental in designing many, many years ago. But what this is for, is this is for cleaning out your brushes and rollers at, at the end of the day. So again, you're, you're using a, an oil, you know, a bristle brush, you're cleaning that out in oil with a, with a solvent. Using a, you know, the latex, you're cleaning that out in water. After you finish cleaning it, it goes in the end of the spinner and you spin it dry, okay? You'll notice no flaring out, right? That's because we're, we've got great quality bristle, uh, polyester nylon in there. Baked, the brush will keep its shape. You can spin that brush after job after job and it'll keep its shape. You slide the roller on the outside of the spinner, put it inside a bucket. So that's, you don't obviously do this on the middle of your job site. It goes in a five gallon bucket, spin it dry, okay? And back in the bag, right? Back in the packaging that you bought it from. Any, any further questions on the series of brushes I just talked about in the lambskin? No? Okay. Goof off is now available as well. That removes dried latex paint without disturbing your urethane finish. So let's say you got a you know, nice polyurethane job on a hardwood floor and you've you know, you got latex splatters all over the place. That'll take the latex off the floor without actually disturbing the sheen level of your urethanes. So great latex paint remover, great all around cleaner, but very high, <laughs> you open this stuff, you'll know it, okay? It's, uh, it's pretty potent stuff. Trays, we've got a number of trays. We don't have our bigger trays here, unfortunately, today, but um, these are just, a, you got a small little bathroom you're doing, little job. These are very inexpensive. We call them our 7-Up trays. These are made from recycled 7-Up bottles, okay? So for those of you that drink Coca-Cola, you probably, you know, if you, you ever had a tooth fall out, when your kids' tooth fall out to prove that they shouldn't be drinking Coca-Cola, you throw it in the Coke, and what happened to that tooth? Decayed it, right? So this is strong enough to hold back basically any solvent, okay? This little inexpensive tray, you can put hot solvents in, not gonna, it's not gonna run through the bottom of it. So inexpensive, but uh, great little, uh, little paint tray. Extension poles, again, thinking about the painter. If you're a light duty contractor, this pole would probably do you just fine, okay? So one of the things you'll notice with our poles, we put a big heavy duty metal end on the end of it. Why is that important? Because most of our competitors put plastic. And you're putting that on and off a cage frame, you're gonna destroy it. So this is a, a light duty contractor um, extension pole. And then we have our pin lock pole, which we combine aluminum and fiberglass and why do we do that? We do that because it, it makes the pole that much lighter than using 100% fiberglass, okay? Pin lock, you certainly can drill more, more holes in this if you want more places to stop the pole. But very, very durable, even on an eight to 16 footer. So they've just added the uh, larger size to the mix. So patching compounds. This is the most unique patching compound on the market today. <clears throat> we set out to make a patching compound that would basically go on any substrate, an interior or exterior application. 
So this will go on wood, your walls, uh, metal. You, know, you, got, you got a ding in your car, you actually can use this on the ding in your car. Okay, so it sticks to basically any substrate. We have a tremendous amount of, of metal doors in our market, and they are, they're always getting banged before someone moves into their new houses. So the painters love this product. They can go and patch a metal door, sand it, prime the patch, and away they go and paint the door. So shrinks very little. Does it have to be um, pure metal, or can it go over painting, like painting metal? Painting yeah, painting metal, sure, no problem. Yeah, just I'd recommend you scruff it up a little bit with sandpaper first. Just give it a light sand. Um, but absolutely, it can go over painted surface. No, this is, this, is, uh, this is an oil. This is a solvent base. Very little sanding, shrinks very little. Typically, in our market, you can paint over it within an hour. In a high humidity day like today, you're probably going to be looking at an hour and a half. And it depends on the size of fill. So you've got a doorknob size hole, not a problem. You can patch it with this. Okay, just going to take some multiple coats to get it there. So that's our DynaPro. Dynapatch Pro series. If you stopped 100 painters in Canada, <clears throat> 95 of them would have this in their van. We sell this to everybody. Home Depot, everybody, because it's in such high demand. We have a lightweight, and I mean it's lightweight. This is latex based, great for small fills, small nail holes. You can actually use this with a great, you know, with a good quality putty knife, no sanding needed. Okay? Dries in about a half an hour, and you can prime and paint over it within a half an hour. Beauty about this one, too, is you get down to the jar, down the end of the jar, and it starts to dry out on you. Add a little water, just comes right back to life. Okay? So you can actually just reinvent the product if it's gone hard on you. Okay, so two patches, which cover every single application you could, you could possibly think of. It's going to do the job for you. Oil and grease in kitchens are dirty substrates that you got to paint. You, you got to wash those down, right? Use a TS trisodium phosphate. You got to use a multi purpose cleaner. You got to use something. And what's the biggest drawback when, when you do something like that? You have to rinse and rinse and rinse the wall, right? You got to get all that cleaner off the wall. Because Harris will tell you that's, they get a lot of, you get a lot of paint problems by people not rinsing the cleaner off the wall. Paint won't stick to TSP. So the beauty of this one is, it makes a ton of product, this is a concentrate, but you don't have to worry about that. It'll cut the grease, cut the grime, and, and yes, you, need, you should rinse it, but you don't have to rinse it 100%. Just wipe it down with water, one pass, with a rag, and you're, you're ready to go for, for painting. Again, huge time saver. You're not going multiple times re-cleaning that substrate to to make sure all the cleaners off the off the wall. So that's called our Eco TSP, and it's Eco because you, you actually pour this down your sink. TSP, I wouldn't recommend that. Okay, it's it's friendly to the environment, so it's very very friendly to the environment. Water water soluble, obviously. It's a product we've had for 40, 40 years. One of our first products. It's just it's a silica sand designed to create a rough substrate which for your environment is great for around all the pools and resorts. So as your enamel is setting up or your urethanes or whatever you're putting down, just sprinkle this on. It comes with a sifter type talcum powder bottle. And while that, while that coating's setting up, just sprinkle that on. You can paint over it. You can add it to your paint, but the only problem with that is you're, you're going to be constantly stirring it to keep it in suspension. Okay? But very simple, easy product. Japan dryer is also available at Harris. So that's great for getting your oils to set up a little quicker. So if you're in an environment where you're, you know, you're putting a urethane down, you know, it's an eight hour recoat time or whatever it is, you can add a little Japan dryer to that urethane and it's gonna speed up the dry time, not change any qualities of the urethane itself. Okay? It's a great little great little trick to get in and out of the job a lot quicker maybe than you have. Um, and that's, that's about it for me, guys.